Yasser Ahmed from the Puma Hello, good morning. Uh, my name is Yasser Ahmed. I'm also representing the Southside Coalition of Community Health Centers, which make up seven community health centers that uh, serve the South Los Angeles area. Uh, for community clinics, uh, the safety and the for community clinics, the safety uh, for the community is extremely important. We're committed to keeping standards high, just as we expect our hospitals to keep the standards high. But while we ask that the the hospitals and the the, uh, the emergency rooms are are being discussed in terms of the plans of, of the future, we ask that um, that the community that the community really thinks about how we should approach um, the the closures. Our patients depend on the Martin Luther King hospital. Over 60% of our patients are referred there. And if they're not sent to the to the emergency if they're not sent to the uh, the hospitals then they're sent to the emergency room. We ask that while the solutions and plans are being made that we do not shut down the emergency rooms and we do not shut down the hospitals. Thank you very much. Representing clergy in South Los Angeles. In fact, these two hospitals, uh, the Martin Luther King Jr. King Drew Hospital and the Dan Cuban Hospital, had some 94,000 emergency room visits this past year. Uh, they provide some 800 licenses a day to uh, allow the loss of uh, King Drew and to allow the closure of the Daniel Freeman University is devastating for the community. 
we're concerned about the care for the needs of the community. And so we call for the governor to demonstrate true compassion in calling a state of emergency, because that's what we're facing, and step in and engage in the activities that are necessary to save the hospitals, to save the emergency room, and to provide quality health care in this tragically underserved community. All right. It wasn't supposed to be a protest, but uh, we're very passionate about the issues uh, related to the patients that go to King Drew Hospital. Uh, next, we have representing the California Nurses Association, Denora Williams. No, 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 the other side. There you yeah. go. Hi. My name is Denora Williams. I represent the registered nurses at Sinella Hospital. The registered nurses are calling on the governor to please declare a state of emergency in South Central LA. Registered nurses at Sentinel want you to know that they cannot currently handle the same the amount of patients that are coming into their emergency room. Approximately five to six thousand patients left last year without ever being seen. Thousands of patients have already left this year without ever being seen because the wait is too long. Ambulances that are coming in with critically ill patients have to wait hours sometimes for beds to be seen. When they close the Iron Freeman and King Drew, Many, many more the ambulance services will have to be diverted to an already burnt out emergency room. We are talking about adults and children where every minute of their lives counts. This is a Katrina disaster in the making. Please, Governor, help us save lives and declare it what it is, a state of emergency. Next, we have representing the Korean Resource Center, the Health Access Project Director, Caroline Lee. Hi, my name is Caroline Lee, and I'm the Health Access Project Advocacy Director at the Korean Resource Center. Um, we, have, we serve approximately 3,000 low-income families and seniors to ensure that everyone has access to affordable and quality health care. Everyone has the right to health care that speaks their language and their culture. Low income and limited English admissions community members should not have to suffer because they are not insured. When you are sick, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. All human beings need to be treated and have the basic right to lead healthy lives. The problem here is that the most vulnerable members of our community are losing access to affordable health care. Reality is people are losing their lives. The problem is not limited to King Drew Hospital. The past few years, Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors have closed over a dozen health centers and school-based clinics, eliminating approximately half a million clinic visits per year. There are over 6.5 million uninsured Californians. Where will they now go for health care? With the closure of Daniel Freeman Hospital and these other clinics, poor and severely health-challenged people are losing access to trauma centers and full-service hospitals. Shutting down or privatizing King Drew is not the answer. This is only a band-aid that will only hurt the community in the long run. Five years ago, my mother was found hemorrhaging and collapsed onto the floor. The ambulance took her to King Drew Hospital. She went into the ER room where she was given pints of blood to keep her alive. Afterwards, my mom was diagnosed with cervical cancer. She chose this hospital because the hospital offered bilingual Korean staff that allowed her to feel comfortable and allowed her to speak of her pains and gains in her own language as she rebuilt her body and her life. Now, thanks to King Drew Hospital, my mom's a cancer survivor. This hospital was there for my mother at that critical moment, and it should still be there to save lives in the future. In closing, the Los Angeles County Public Health System is facing a major crisis. The solution is not closing down another county hospital and strengthening what we have to meet the needs of our most vulnerable and fragile members of our community. What we need is a task force that includes community members, doctors, administrators, staff, and experts who believe in long term. What we 
need is a full service hospital to be there for the person who will die if that person arrives a minute too late. We are here today in solidarity with the South Los Angeles community to demand a right to affordable health care and a right to live. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Moving right along, uh, representing the city of Inglewood, Mayor Roosevelt Warren. Save our health care facility. responsibility uh, of the state, the county, and the federal government to do it. You know, health care is something that everyone has a right to have. And to close an ER because individuals are uninsured is outrageous. You know, uh, if we can send money all over the world protect others, to give health to others, then certainly we can do it right here in the United States. Certainly we can do it right here in the county of Los Angeles, the city of Inglewood. It's just outrageous to, to even think about closing these facilities. We all know why they're being closed. They're being closed because of money. Here and simple as that. The ER and Daniel Freeman is going to be closed because Daniel Freeman cannot continue to serve those that do not have insurance, and it is the responsibility of the state, the county, and the federal government to see that those individuals have health care. That's the reason why we call upon the federal government to call upon Governor Schwarzenegger to call upon the Board of Supervisors to step up to the plate, keep King Drew open. I mean, to even think of closing King Drew is outrageous. I mean, what are we going to do with all of those individuals that need that care uh, on the south end of the county? What are we going to do? Just let them die? Of course not. There are ways the Board of Supervisors, they must appeal this decision, or the Board of Supervisors must have some of the hospital take over that facility and see that it continues to run with full services and with ER. That's absolutely essential, and I'm calling them upon state, the federal government, and the county to do what's right by its people. That's all I'm asking. I'm not asking any more than any other country would ask. I'm not asking any more than we do for other countries. Let's do the same thing here in the state of California. Let's do the same thing here in Los Angeles and England. God bless you. We have representing the Office of Congresswoman Juanita Melinda McDonald, Janae Oliver. Thank you and good morning. My name is Janae Oliver and I'm a field representative for Congresswoman Juanita Millender McDonald. She's not here today as she's handling other legislative priorities. I appreciate the Community Health Council's consistent support of issues that are a vital concern to my constituents and for calling this important press conference. Currently, several proposals are being considered for the future of Kingston Hospital. We currently have to urgently to present a proposal that encompasses sweeping systematic reform as the process moves forward.
Premier Coalition actually talk to the senior member of the governor's staff or the governor himself about whether he's even going to meet with you to talk about this issue at all? The, uh, governor ha the governor's staff has offered to meet with five delegates following this press conference. Who on the governor's staff? Who on the governor's staff? So we've spoken to Kim Belshay in the governor's office. She's she's uh, interested in the, in the um, idea. We're going up. Kim obviously is in this building. We're going to meet with someone in this building immediately following this press conference. The question of declaring a state of emergency. What are you looking for? Are you you know looking for money, which in theory would have disappeared in the next two, three, four weeks? What exactly are you asking the governor to do? We're asking the governor to step in and take action. Uh, this governor has a reputation for uh, taking action in tough situations, and so it's exactly right that we haven't figured out the exact uh, protocol to ask for. What we know is we want the hospital to stay open, we want services to be maintained, and we want this disaster to be averted. Those are the three things we know, and we'll work with him to figure out how he does that. What we want is for the governor to come to the table, the county board of supervisors to come to the table, and all of the community members to come to the table, to figure out a solution and get it done and get it done right away. Let me add to that. The part of your answer is yes. The governor, by declaring a state of emergency, can facilitate providing of the immediate resources. He can, and resources not only financially, but can mobilize whatever resources there are to begin to, uh, as it were, stop the, 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 the bloodshed and to create the opportunity for the kinds of decisions to be made, the kinds of actions to be made, so the hospital, and not the hospital, but the health care of the community can be saved. The governor has, under a state of emergency, the power to act in a creative, innovative fashion, and that's what's needed at this hour for the governor to step in and exercise the full strength of his office to truly save the health care of South Los Angeles and the South Bay Area. Let me see if we've got this straight. What you're asking for is for the state to one foot the bill for any loss of federal funds. Not to foot the bill, but to that that they can provide supplement, but also to deal in a creative kind of way. We also have to bring brain power. We have to be able to make the kinds of decisions that are necessary in, both in this immediate loss, but also to begin to mobilize and pull whatever resources are necessary together to make positive, creative changes to save the health care of this community. That means dismissal of large portions of the kingdom. Those are the kinds of decisions that have to receive attention in the process. I'm not in the position to preliminarily make those decisions. That's why we're asking the governor to exercise his power to create the opportunity for those kinds of decisions to be able to be made, whatever is the best and the healthiest, to make that possible for the good and the welfare of the community. That would be any measures that are needed. If there needs to be wholesale replacement of the management team, if there needs to be dismissal of medical staff. All those kinds of things, the opportunity to explore. I, I, again, let me be very careful, okay? I want to be very careful because I cannot make those decisions. But he's in a position to be able to facilitate a process so that assessments can be made and decisions can be made. Do you want a timeline? 90 days, 180 days? It's my understanding that he can exercise that power for six months. In the meantime, the legislature can enter into the process as well. Thank you everybody for being here.